Good morning. Welcome to worship uh, this Sunday morning at Newtown United Methodist Church. I know it's a pretty cold day with a little bit of snowflakes, but I know that there are uh, some other snowflakes in our parking lot. Honk your horn if you're here. Oh, so nice to have you here. So nice to have you here as a part of our worship today. I did want to mention, if you're watching this uh, later, um, I just want to remind you again how we, how we do this stream and stuff. Uh, our Facebook Live is every Sunday morning at 1030 Eastern Time on the Newtown United Methodist Church uh, Facebook page. Newtown United Methodist Church Facebook page, you can watch it live. After the fact, uh, it can, remains on the, on the church Facebook page. It's also on uh, Bruce Bachelor Glader's uh, Facebook page. I will, uh, I'll share that later in the day. And then Christy puts it up on the New Time Name of this Church uh, YouTube channel. I know that there are some people that don't do Facebook, so it's good to have it on uh, YouTube as well. So anyway, that's how we do it. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you're hearing this, you've figured out a way to listen to it. I just wanted to give you the other options. I do want to remind everybody that's here in person, again, to uh, continue to practice uh, social distancing and your face mask. And be careful in the parking lot, too, because it's slippery. But it's good to have you here. And as always, we collect uh, food items and other things for our little pantries. You can leave that at the church any given Sunday and also uh, your offering as well. But again, thank you for being with us in worship this morning. I hope that it will be a meaningful and rewarding time for you today. Now listen, listen to the announcements uh, from Beth today. Morning. These are your announcements for Sunday, January 24th. In finance, tithes and offerings are $7,305 versus a budget of $122,726. Pastor Bruce's Bible study continues this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. The book is, in, is entitled Inspired by Rachel Held Evans. If you would like to join the study, please contact Pastor Bruce at brucebatch at gmail.com. In joys and concerns, Pat Bray remains in the ICU. Continued prayers for her recovery. Please pray for Carol Roberts' niece, Peggy. She suffered multiple and extensive injuries while skiing and has had to have multiple surgeries and much rehab ahead of her. We pray for strength and healing. Please pray for G's daughter's in-law's mother, Betty, who is now in hospice care, and for Drew and Vita, who are to have a resolution soon. We pray that God is always nearby in times of trouble and hears our prayers as we search for comfort and renewed health. Let us continue to pray for our first responders and healthcare workers as Hamilton County stays purple and that the vaccine will be made more available in the coming weeks. Have a good week, everybody.
Today is January 24th, 2021, third Sunday after Epiphany. Please join me in the call to worship. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from the Lord. God only is my rock and my salvation. I shall not be shaken. Trust in the Lord at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God. Our trust is in the Lord. We worship God's name. Let us worship God. Please join me in our prayer of praise and adoration. You are our rock and our strength, O God, and in you rests our deliverance. You defend us in the midst of adversity. You protect us from ultimate harm. You humble the mighty with acts and manifest your transcendent power. The lowly you comfort with your tender embrace. We gather this day, saved by your mercy. Hear us now as we herald your greatness. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of confession. We confess to you, O God, and before one another that we have sinned. We are so busy talking and listening to others that we forget to listen for the voice of God in our midst. When we read scripture, we are more apt to be looking for confirmation of our ideas than we are to hear the word God has to say. When we sit in church and listen to the readings, we are more likely to be criticizing the reader's style of presentation than we are to be expecting a word from God. Open our ears and our hearts that we may hear the words of life you speak to us and the words of grace you would have us speak to others. Amen. Hear this word from God. Your sins are forgiven you. Live into that reality and know God's love and grace. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is from Mark chapter 1 verses 14 through 20. Jesus calls the first disciples. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. <clears throat> As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the choir for that uh, encouraging and inspirational anthem, Lead Me, Guide Me. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to guide me in the message that I will be proclaiming this morning. We all could use a good word from you, so I pray for your Holy Spirit to bring it to us this morning and help our lives to not only ponder your truth, but then grow in our faith and our discipleship to live your truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, every morning I get out of bed full of aches and pains, and I remind myself that I am really, truly an old man. Now, one of the things I've been trying to do with my life is trying to avoid those, you know, those old man kinds of things, because they, they do come along. I mean, poor Bernie Sanders shows up at inauguration, just dressed, I thought, wisely for the occasion, and he's made a laughing stock. Meme after me, making fun of this guy for bundling up and doing the smart thing. So that's what I got to look forward to. I was thinking that one of the things that uh, I hear a lot of older people do, and I used to do more of it, is like what, they, what I would call Eustace, where you're driving around somewhere, and the guy said, you know, that place used to be this place. You know, there used to be a school there. Oh, you know, uh, that mall used to be, uh, that used to be an empty field, or, you know, that Kroger store used to be, uh, I know, Good Foods or whatever, and on and on it goes. And you find that you're just basically mourning the loss of things. Well, I've discovered that you can just pivot a little bit and you can look forward to the future by moving from Eustace to, is that still a thing? You know, like I think about, I drive past uh, Eastgate Mall, which I dearly love, and but most of the stores are empty and you say, well, most of the shopping malls, is, is that still a thing? Are there still shopping malls? Well, yes, we have Eastgate Mall. And a family video store uh, just went out of business. And when I saw that, I thought, a DVD rental stores, is that still a thing? But the one thing I want to talk about this morning is uh, a thing that's still a thing. And it's the ice cream truck. I, I hear it every summer, still goes down our street, you hear turkey in the straw, and you hear the ice cream truck, and the ice cream truck's actually driving by so fast, you know this poor soul doesn't expect anybody to stop and buy ice cream. I keep thinking, now is that still a thing? An ice cream truck? Why is that still a thing? Because I thought to myself, you know, when I was a kid, way back when, the ice cream truck would pull by, and I had lots of brothers and sisters. My mom would hand me a dollar, she said, well, go and get popsicles, and we'd have enough popsicles, they were only like 10 cents, we'd have enough popsicles for all the kids, it would change. And now it's like the ice cream truck's going by, hey mom, quick, quick, could I have a $20 bill? <laughs> you know, not quite an impulse anymore. Plus, you have to think about, there's this uh, kind of stranger safety thing going on. You know, I think about uh, a story I learned, is, uh, it's been going around for centuries, called the Pied Piper of Hamlin. You might recall this story, this, this town of Hamlin, it's in Germany, it's, it's have a rat population, all kinds of rats. This guy comes in with the magic pipe, he says, I'll get those rats out of, out of town if you'll pay me, pay me to do it. And the mayor says, yeah, I'll pay you for getting those rats out of town. So Pipe Piper plays his pipe, the rats follow him, and then he comes back for his money, and the mayor says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't, can't seem to find it anywhere. So the Pipe Piper says, okay, I'll play a different tune. He plays a different tune, and all the children in the village follow the Pied Piper, and they're gone forever. Pied Piper, that's kind of a scary thing. Who would follow somebody just for playing a tune? Well, that brings us to Jesus now, doesn't it? Jesus calling the first disciples. And it seems like, indeed, that it's almost as simple as that. Jesus comes and finds people, and he says, come and follow me, and they drop what they're doing, and they follow him. Hard to believe, hard to believe. Now, in Mark's gospel, the first four people he calls are two sets of brothers. He calls Simon and Andrew and James and John. Now, Simon and Andrew had been followers of John the Baptist. We find this out in other, other gospel accounts. They were followers of John the Baptist. And as Mark says so succinctly, you know, after John was arrested, his ministry came to an end. Now, what's interesting to me is that, okay, now, as I mentioned previously in a previous sermon, even though John the Baptist's ministry kind of came to an end when he got arrested, his followers were still meeting. So it seems as though Simon and Andrew said, oh, that's good enough for us. Let's go back to fishing for fish. And they were fishing for fish. And Jesus calls them, 
and I guess, you know, they may have been missing, following somebody, and they, they certainly had seen Jesus before, so they leave their nets and they follow him. Well, then he gets to where uh, he meets with uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And Zebedee is their dad, and they had a local fishing company. And uh, Jesus says, come and follow me. Now, what's interesting, what's kind of poignant here is that they leave their dad, they leave their dad with the fishing business when they follow Jesus. Now, Mark is kind enough to mention that when they leave Zebedee, that there are still some hired hands there. So Mark says, don't worry, don't worry, reader. There are still people to help out their dad at Zebedee and Sons. But I could see, I could imagine, after they left Zebedee getting a can of paint, going up to that sign said Zebedee and Sons Fishery, and just painting over, painting over the sign where it says, and Sons, and then painting on help wanted. And taking that sign and putting it in a net on front of his place, Zebedee, Fishery, help wanted. Putting it right there in the net. And that was the very first internet advertisement in the Bible. And uh, that was a joke I used nine, nine months ago. Think about it for a while and you'll wonder why I use it again. But anyway, the two of them, or the four of them, followed Jesus just like that. Barbara Brown Taylor, in talking about this story, calls it a miracle story because it's a miracle that people would follow Jesus that quickly along his way to the ministry that he had in store for them. And yet, you see, um, that is still true today. That's still true today. We are calling people to follow Jesus. Now, what's interesting, Jesus says in the New Revised Standard Version that you read, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Okay, so reading that verse, you think, well, okay, you know how to fish for fish? You can fish for people. Now, the truth of the matter, though, is that doesn't always work. As speaking as a pastor, I know that every fall in a normal year, we'd have a nominating committee and people would make calls to get people to do different new chores. At the, I call them chores. What, boo, busted. I mean, new opportunities for service in the church. And what we forget sometimes is that doesn't always work. Like if you call somebody and say, hey, I know you're a secretary at that big company. How would you like to be secretary for administrative council meetings? And a lot of people say, no, why, why do you think I want to be secretary for that? I do that all week. Or we might, this is the thing that I've been aware of throughout my years of ministry. People might say, hey, Shirley's a school teacher. She probably would love to teach the little ones on Sunday school. And this happened more often than not. I'm not telling tales out of school. The teachers will say, I teach kids five days a week, spend my nights working on lesson plans, grading papers, and you think there's nothing I'd like to do more on Sunday morning and teach another bunch of kids. Not only that, uh, kids come to public school because they have to. Kids come to Sunday school because they're dragged there by their parents. It's a volunteer kind of thing. And oftentimes they don't get the same kids every week and half the kids don't want to be there. And you think I really want to teach Sunday school? You play dumb say, yeah, do you? <laughs> but. I said, oh, I get it. You were being sarcastic. And said, yeah, bingo. That's the last thing I want to do because they're fried. And actually, what you find out that some of the best Sunday school teachers are not teachers during the week. They are loving parents, grandparents, and just people that love kids and love Jesus. And they turn out to be wonderful teachers. Okay, well then, who are we supposed to call? You know, who are we, how are we supposed to get people to follow Jesus? Well, here's the thing. The King James Version actually translates this verse better than the New Revised Standard and closer to the Greek. Because Jesus is saying, come with me and fish for people. He truly is saying, come with me and I will make you become fishers of people. I will make you become fishers of people. You're used for fishing for fish. You will become fishers of people you're going to have a different call in your life. You're going to change. It's going to require you to change and do something differently. You see, that there's a, it's a subtle difference, but Jesus saying, I'm not giving you another task to do like fishing for fish. No, you're going to have to change if you're going to be my disciples because I've got work for you to do, different kinds of work. Now, um, 
I was reading Joel Marcus, uh, his uh, academic commentary on the book of Mark. He calls this first section of Mark Jesus' honeymoon period. It's a honeymoon period in Mark's gospel where there's no opposition and things get off to a roaring start and Jesus cast out demons, he heals all kinds of people and the Pharisees still aren't going after him. So it's a honeymoon period. And sometimes you see we're very inclined to want to follow Jesus if there's no demands on our life and it's not going to require much of us. But the truth of the matter is, if you and I are going to be good Christians, something's got to change. There has to be that inward transformation, you see, where we stop thinking about church as being one more thing we got to do, following Jesus as one more chore we have to do, and start saying, Lord, I'm yours. Open up my eyes to your kingdom. Open up my life to the possibilities of living for others beside myself. Help me learn to grow each and every day, how to fall more and more in love with God and more and more with love with the world. Because you see, if I truly love something, I'm gonna commit my life to it. You see this all the time in controversial causes in our nation. When somebody speaks out for the oppressed or speaks out for the, the forgotten people or speaks out in a way that, that gets a reaction from, from folks saying, how could you possibly love that kind of thing? Um, well, you can say, I don't know. But, you know, I once was blind, but now I see. It was lost, but now I'm found. I once felt those people were outside of God's love, but once I discerned that I thought that way about myself and the love of Christ spoke to me through other people, then you see my life is transformed. I'm a new person, and I am the Lord's. I am busy now the rest of my life doing kingdom work, and I do it not because I'm simply adding uh, being a Christian to one more thing to do, by allowing Christ to transform me and be changed. That's a big difference. And that's why I think it's so hard sometimes to find true disciples. Not that we don't want to be a disciple, but you see, until that transformation comes, it is going to be a burden thing, burdensome kind of thing to do, to love other people. And it is. And until that transformation comes, it's going to be very easy for us to talk ourselves out of it. Because if there's one less, one more thing we don't need, we don't need another burden on our life, another thing, another hard and heavy thing to do. But you see, Jesus Christ has the wisdom to say, come and follow me and I will help you to become fishers of people. You will not be changed on your own. That's going to be God's thing. That's going to be my thing. And I will change you and help you to grow. Now, there's a very poignant moment in John's gospel this is after the, res after the crucifixion and after the resurrection. Jesus has already appeared to all the disciples. They've seen him risen. You know, they, you know he see they've seen uh, doubting Thomas, you know, touch me, you know. And, and uh, you know, Jesus come a couple times in a row and, and appeared to them time and time again. And yet, you see, after those appearances, we have a story in John's gospel where we have uh, Simon Peter and the others out fishing again. They're fishing for fish. They're fishing for fish. They are back to their own thing, back to their old gig, their old way of life. Now they've seen the risen Christ. He's appeared to them, but they're still back. They're back, they're sli they're back sliding, they're back to fishing again. So what does Jesus do? He appears to them again. Simon Peter sees him again. Simon Peter comes to his senses again. And Jesus takes that fish which they caught, and they have a fish breakfast, a charcoal fish breakfast, on the shore that day. They have another experience of Jesus Christ. And then later on, the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes on thousands of people, and eventually comes upon Saul of Tarsus, and he becomes Paul the Apostle. By that time, when he encounters Simon Peter, Simon Peter is starting to have visions of his own. And he is really at the place where his life is transformed and together they can reach the world for Jesus Christ. It's not so easy, you see, just to, uh, as simple as just to follow somebody with a, with a appealing uh, pitch line. You know, come on, come and join me. If it was that easy, we'd, every church that had ever had a faith confession would be filled with everybody that came to Jesus Christ during that moment, that high spiritual moment of seeing Jesus for the first time. 
But Mark's gospel reminds us that the gospel call in our life, it's a lifelong proposition. And if you live into it, you see, it can fill your life with joy, with purpose, with love, and with meaning. You'll never have a day go by where you don't have an opportunity to use that love for something. You'll never have a day go by where, where you, we might, will not have an opportunity to, uh, to help your faith grow. Oh, you're going to have your days of doubt. You're going to have your times of, of, of going backwards a few steps. You're going to have your days of nostalgia. But Christ says to you and to me, come and follow me, and I will help you to become fishers of people. Jesus has enough confidence in God's love that he actually believes that if God's love lives through us, it's going to be so persuasive that other people will notice it, other people will ask about it, and most of all, other people will give Jesus Christ the chance to change them too. So, our world may change. Um, ice cream trucks may not be uh, prowling our neighborhood much longer. Uh, the malls may not be around forever. But you know what? Christ's love on our lives will continue to find new ways to touch us and to change us and to move us. Christ's love will never be a used to be, but always a come and follow me. So let's listen to the voice of Christ in our lives. Let's work together to see what Jesus can do. And then let's not be surprised. We look behind us and see that people are following us because of the Christ that lives within our hearts and in our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let me uh, proclaim the benediction at this time. You came to worship together, go now to serve. You have been given light, go now to let it shine. You have been blessed with God's love, go now to share that love. You are Christ's disciples, go now to witness to all, in Christ's name, amen. <laughs>